Fight for your lives. Mysterious Monkeys on the blue side. Ninjas in pajamas selected the red side because they had the better record across the course of the LCS split. Elise and Lucian bands and a Casio and Zaya band from the NLP. And so far, red side has been very, very good here in the promotion tournament. A lot of teams have very clear, uh, have a like, specific role, but they want to counter pick. The man on your screen right now down in the bottom is Kikis. Obviously, he's the kind of top laner who wants to be a carry, who wants to be a split pusher, who loves to get a counter pick. So NIP picking red side makes a lot of sense to try and guarantee that it's Prophet who gets a good matchup in the top lane. But even with counter picks, Kikis really struggled in the early game. But he had the wrong counter picks. Oh, okay. I, I disagree with half his picks. I was like, what are you picking that for? You're going to lose now. Anyway, that happened. He struggled last time. That was a big issue for Mysterious Monkeys because they rely on Kikis for early advantages. This this draft though, Medic, a lot of AD carry bands once again, just like we saw in the last series, Callista, Zaya from NIP, Corky, Lucian banned away by the Monkey, so Tristana, a good first pick. And then the Jarvan and Makan locked in by NIP. We've seen them play these champions so often. In fact, Prophet has the most games played on Jarvan out of any of his champions in his pool. With the, the Zaya being taken away and the Callista, you're really narrowing down, down that AD carry pool for the ninjas in pajamas. The Mysterious Monkeys take the Tristana first, alongside the Gragas and the Alistair. So do we, do we get the HeQ Caitlyn uh, coming in, or will they just save AD carry for next because they have something special prepared? You know, that's where we start seeing their 30 AD carries, like a vein <laughs> we saw earlier today. And it worked it, so well. It was so great, right. but uh, obviously it means that you can actually go for another role right now. Let Mysterious Monkeys potentially use a few bands on more AD carries and still find something down. Deep down, you will find something. But HeQ has performed well when he's been on Callista, not so well when he's been on any other AD carry. Carry. So diving deep into that well of champions perhaps isn't the best idea for NIP in this draft. Well, right now they don't have a choice because Callista needs to be banned on red side, otherwise the enemy team will just take it away and you never want to give Callista over. She's too good right now, makes her support way too strong as well. But this draft, a lot of tanks already coming in, no big surprise. Nagnes Galio was something NIP used a lot in the start of this split and it was somewhat successful in terms of individual performance, but it lost a lot of games. Sorry, Deficio, he went 316 and 9 over four games. Now, how successful that is in your eyes, hey, maybe in your solo It's not about games. the KDA here, Medic. It's about landing that Q on minions and coordinating your ulti with he your side lanes. Minions really I actually felt bad for him because I felt like he was doing the correct things, uh, correct things with going to side lanes with ultis, and then his team would actually let him down. Anyway, that's a different story. Point is, Nagme is right back on the Galio. We have seen these tank comps where you have a lot of dive being very good with Galio. They have a Jarvan jumping in, they have a Rakan jumping in, and they have a Galio ulti to follow. Already have a great combo set up there and a lot of different options. The Cassiopeia ban from NIP. It's a good lane for Cosq into Nagne's Galio. And Mysterious Monkeys have looked towards those AD carry bans alongside the Camille. Mm. Even more dive taken away from NIP. All right, so they do not want to have like a Camille counter pick in case they're picking something like a Gnar up top lane for Kikis. I really think Gnar is one of those picks that always needs to be considered in the draft because he just gives you a bit of everything. You have a fine laning phase, you can split push, you can team fight. Uh, I really like whenever someone actually just takes it even as a blind pick because I think even the counter matchups can be hard to execute. Like, will Kikis play Jace? Can Mysterious Monkeys execute a Jace comp? Well, we're gonna have to see if he actually wants to take that matchup. Kikis has played Jace in the past, hasn't played it recently, of course. A lot of bans being focused towards him in some of these picks and ban phases. Koski comfortable on the Vladimir as well. It's a scaling matchup in that mid lane and does okay into the Galio. Definitely uh, offers just like almost a guaranteed late game presence. Uh, yes, your early game is not that fantastic. Fantastic, you will get pushed in, but the fact that you have super strong late game fights where tanks can kill you because your Vladimir is super successful. There's still a pick. Uh, left here, kick his top lane. Jace is still uh, available. It is an option for him to take and then play around top side, of course. Hold me, Medic. Is this a, a tank? Kick is at a counter pick and he went tank? <sighs> oh. It's we, a good adaptation, though. We need new casters here. I need, right. I need backup. <laughs> okay, hopefully I'll let you catch your breath for just a second. But yes, Kikis has taken the tank into the top lane. Could be a flex, of course. You could still have the Gragas. That's still a tank. It's still a tank. And I love it. I absolutely love it because right now in the promotion tournament, in the losers match, you need to play comps that are easy to execute. A ton of tanks and great scaling for late game team fights. That has proven to be some of the easiest comps to play right now because 
Their win condition is get to late game, group up as five, and run straight at the enemy and just fight them. Yes, it might suck a little bit in the early game up in that top lane, but if you get to late game against a team like NIP, who's not always the best at snowballing the advantage, your composition kicks in and you might just win the game. So we've got an easy to execute composition on the side of the Mysterious Monkeys. NIP drafting Woes last week. Do you think those have carried on over into this week, Deficient? I just think uh, they once again have a composition where we need to judge the execution quite a lot. Can they utilize Galio ulti in the early to mid game? This Ash pick here, of course, in a late game fight is useless against what we see on the side of Mysterious Monkey's tanks that Ash can't really kill. And Vladimir, they can just dive on to HQ and kill him without, you know, even thinking about it. He's just kind of in the way when he's going for other, other champions. If they can, however, can use Ash level six, Rakan level six, Galio level six, and Snowball, then we can see NIP's draft really kick in. If they can't do that, we have to say, well, Mysterious Monkeys, they have to better late game and that is their win condition. And if they can't do that, you have to look at the adaptation week to week and say Mysterious Monkeys are the team that adapted and the team that deserved to face Schalke tomorrow. It's all on the line here, DeFisho. A best of five for your lives in the EU LCS. Even if you win today, you're not guaranteed a spot because you have to face the might of Schalke Null Fear tomorrow. The only people in this room at the moment who are happy are Giants because they're already in to the EU LCS. That's very true. Schalke, they're ready to watch this game here and note down everything they see so they're ready for tomorrow because you only have one day to get ready for that last BO5. But it's about this game between NIP and Mysterious Monkeys and we have two teams playing the one best of five you never want to play in Professional League of Legends. The losers match in a promotion tournament. Lose, you're out. You're in the Challenger Series, no more LCS for you. Win, you feel great for a moment and you realize, oh wait, there's still a game tomorrow against a team that already beat one of the LCS teams. So it's, it's a horrible feeling to play this match. Especially since you've just seen how well Schalke performed up against Giants as well. That was an incredibly close series of Pretty high level League of Legends as well. It is a Mysterious Monkey's pause. We'll find out exactly what's going on in just a minute. And it's a difficult road to have to walk for both of these oh two yeah, teams. Oh yeah, it is. Sure. And it, it, it starts with this game here where whenever you talk to players who just play a promotion tournament or before they go into the games, they're nervous in a different way where it's the kind of nervous where you don't really sleep that well the day before. It's the kind of nervous where you, you picture all these scenarios in your head before the game starts, where you think about you being the carry who makes sure your team wins and they requalify, or you maybe have a terrible day and you're one of the reasons this team is knocked out of the LCS. Like, there's so many scenarios plays playing in the heads here of these players, and it's not a celebration. It's literally just do or die. So we have to see. Will some of these guys choke? Will they struggle on stage when it really matters? Or will they actually be able to perform at the highest level? Okay, Kiss has already actually got a flank onto Ooh. Shook here. Amazing's coming in as well. The rest of Mysterious Monkey's on their way. Shook's gonna get knocked back. Here comes Amazing, puts a sapling down, and this will be Shook's flash early on. The Mysterious Monkey's adapting once again in the early game. A yeah, really good start here, especially game one. You know, getting Shook's flash early, trying to interrupt him a little bit, get a few warts on the camps to spot where Shook is starting, is very, very good for the Mysterious Monkey's. As we mentioned in the champ select, their draft, it's a ton of late game. Great scaling from the mid laner, from the AD carry, especially this Vladimir who can just kind of ignore the big tanks himself because they just don't have the damage to kill him, will shine in this game. So it's on NIP to be proactive in the early game. They have to engage tools, they have a lot of them. Use them, coordinate them. It's harder to be proactive when your jungler doesn't have flash, though. That Jarvan level 2 gank is something we've seen throughout the history of Jarvan jungle. He can jump in with that flash, get the knockup, and then you can get that CC chain going. But if you don't have the flash, it makes it a lot harder for you to do. A little bit of setback, you're correct, for NIP, but should not be the end of the world. That split has been full of little bits of setback. Very though, true. So sure. It's an annoying start to have right now. Amazing, uh, because he had the vision on Shook, is actually walking in to try and make it even worse. He can deny a red buff as well, just put Shook even further behind already, tanking 
up that red buff Ooh. down to about 200 HP. Now do you go back? You've got Smite, you can get some health back, but Amazing is belligerent, persistent, as he continues to pressure Shook. Shook right now hates his life. He just wants to get this red buff. He's already low. He knows he can probably, you know, only do one camp, maybe not even one camp, and that's why he's just playing it safe and, and recalling. Amazing, on the other hand, he's going straight to top lane. And he is. Prophet will be able to jump away. Amazing, a kick has been a stalwart part of this mysterious monkeys lineup. And across the split, both them and NIP have had quite a few woes to Fischio. NIP with a slightly better record, but only by a minor amount. Yeah, these are two teams that never really entered the EULCS and challenged for playoff spots. It was actually very clear already from the first few weeks that these guys would be fighting to try and avoid the promotion tournament. They've been sitting in last place for basically the entire LCS. And that's why it's obviously fully deserved that they are down here and they are playing this losers match because in terms of improvement and growth, we didn't see much. I think the biggest jump for Mysterious Monkeys was when they picked up Kickers and Amazing. Great honeymoon phase, two weeks of actually looking a lot better and being really active in their games, but then it just kind of came back down and we never really saw the Monkeys climb back up towards what we saw there in the middle of the split. NIP did have a little bit of a honeymoon phase right at the end of the split against Fnatic. Haven't seen that carry over into the promotion tournament yet, but it's always a possibility. And Shook and Sprato going for an early invade here on towards the red buff. Yeah, it is important to highlight that Amazing didn't actually steal anything away from Shook. Uh, he did force him to recall and he didn't get his red buff as fast as possible. But then Amazing walked top lane, threw a sapling, walked away from top lane and didn't counter jungle anything. So. Shook is actually, in terms of experience, not behind. He was just set a little bit back in terms of his own timings. Uh, he is obviously sitting with the enemy red buff now, on his way to his own red buff, but look, Kikis is on his way, so is Amazing. They will be able to spot out Shook as the Scryer's Bloom catches him right at the edge. Kikis is on that, Gragas Amazing took the Maokai into the jungle, a fitting place for a tree to be. A fitting place for both he and Kikis to stand as Shook tries to dance around the edge of vision. Nagna actually getting pushed in in the mid lane allows Coscu to come up and creates a little bit more safety for the mysterious monkeys as they steal away the red. So they finally do get their red buff stolen, or they steal the red buff from Shook. Top lane as well, uh, while Prophet is on this Gnar here. What you can do as a Gragas, if you feel like you are under a lot of pressure, just put a lot of skills in your Q early on and use that to just farm. You don't actually have to go for any early trades. And then once you go back to base and get a little bit more AP with or a little bit more armor, sorry, you can actually start playing a bit more aggressive in the lane. You can start looking for small all-ins against Minion on and have some pretty good traits, but that's that's later on for Kikis. For now, his job is just to farm and stay safe, which is not the classic Kikis style. A lot of these players have been going away from their classic styles across the last couple of weeks. Shook especially. Uh, last week actually had a great early performance. Oh, no, a bad early performance, sorry. It was uh, his opposition who had a great early performance. Low jungle proximity, wasn't really looking for these ganks, and once again we see him set behind in this series. Shook's value on professional teams, his entire career has been around early game impact. Uh, so when he has these games where he's not able to actually pull off any ganks, where uh, he's not adding a lot of value, uh, it gets really hard uh, for the team to kind of play with Shook because he's never been like a great team fighter. Even in this tank meta, it's kind of where he's always struggled. So he was basically in the invisible uh, in the series we saw last week. And that's something that needs to change because we know Shook can have some of these great early games. He's on Javan. Yes, he was delayed a little bit, but again, he's not behind in experience. He's actually doing fine. He's a level up right now, probably half a level if we're being realistic. Throughout the split, he played a lot more Lee Sin and Karzix. Perhaps this tank jungler meta has set him back a little bit in his regular play style. We saw Kikis adapting to the meta, saying, OK, I'll play the Gragas top. Has been pushed in by Prophet in the top lane, but he's going to back, and we'll see if he does pick up that armor that we were talking about earlier on De Fischer to try and deal with this lane. Well, right now, Shook is up here to try and steal something. They're going so for him. So it's all the way up from the bottom lane. Amazing's going to have to flash the wall. And once again, we see the NIP jungler and support duoing to try and get some damage down. And I like the revenge here. Shook actually invading onto Amazing, stealing away his Grump. Maokai is still only level four, four and a half at the moment for Amazing, while Shook is halfway towards level six. So it might be a big difference here in experience. We do see a fight around Blue Buff potentially happening. Top lane are coming, mid lane are Koskus even ghosting. 
We'll try and get some damage down, but he's still only sitting on a Doran shield. Not much AP on that Vlad yet. We'll get Shook and Spasso to disengage. That could have been pretty big for the Monkeys. Kikis tried to interrupt the Flag and Drag here with his ulti, but Shook just made it out in time. No damage dealt onto him. NIP, they do stay alive and is back away, and it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. And it's interesting to Fisher because it's mysterious monkeys who I see making these aggressive plays, making these invades and going for these engages, where NIP are a little bit more on the back foot. When, when we were talking in picks and bans, it seemed like NIP would be the team that went for these picks and these catches in this all-in composition. Well, we're still early on here. They have a lot of time to do Am it. Am I being too eager? A little bit of capital knowledge bit too in my early. system. A little bit too early. We do have level 6 on HQ. We do have ulti on Galio as well. So this is the time where NIP can start making some of these plays. It always starts with pushing out mid. That's the first goal. Nice interrupt from Kickis. Everyone should be able to do Oh, actually, they are fighting a little bit. Yeah, no, into the wall. Prophet's just trying to harass down Kickis. Chucks in ice block into the back. Kickis doing his best Titanic impression, taking an iceberg there. <laughs> I know, I, I know. <laughs> I <guess. laughs> didn't expect that one, but I'll take it, I'll take it. Uh, we've already had five great games, and this is number six, so the casters are getting a little bit crazy. But this one here, Nagne, push out mid against the Vladimir, and then see if you can make a play in your side lane. Either go top and dive Kikis, or bot lane, where you have engage from the Ash. Soon you have ulti from Sprattle. It's a lot of chain CC, which is so effective in the early game where people are very squishy. Keep them in place, you will get the kill. NIP, they're the ones who need to do it. Nagne has been struggling a little bit in that lane. Seems to be being pushed in by Koski more than being able to actually push him out. And it's Koski doing the roaming up to try and get some vision in the NIP jungle. We really want to see this NIP composition come online. It's slightly more complex than the Mysterious Monkeys who can just scale up to the late game and wait to just have these two tanks in the front line and then their damage sources on the back. Exactly. So you want to make it hard for Mysterious Monkeys. You want to force Mysterious Monkeys to be try, be reactive, to actually have to look for these plays with the Galileo and find a way out. Because you can't just sit back and do nothing. Then obviously you will lose more and more. But if Mysterious Monkeys are forced to actually take early fights because of the engage on NIP, boom, suddenly the scaling comp might struggle. If you force Mysterious Monkeys to move in and try and contest the Baron without any proper vision, again, in there and can get the advantage but it requires NIP to do something. Nagne is just trading evenly against the Vladimir. That's in favor of Vladimir. He wants this. Yes, let's farm. Let's not do anything. Let's just stay mid lane and never move. Nagne has pushed Koski back though. It's the first time we've really seen Koski underneath his turret and it looked like Nagne might be going down towards the bottom side of the map. Once again Spartle has left the bottom lane and perhaps is looking for a roam. We've seen him do this twice already. Shook is around the mid lane as well. Maybe something's going to happen around mid. Well they could clear the vision out but Koski knows where the job is and you don't actually want to gank the Vladimir specifically. He has double summon us to move and a pool but you want to again let Nagne have the pressure and then set something up either with Prophet who's winning his lane pushing in the Gragas even Barmy Cinder first from Kegas I think that's a little bit surprising to me actually once he just gets some armor at least a, some more useful defensive stats and just pure HP and then this burn that is actually not that effective in the early game good play into the fact that Kegas doesn't play a lot of tanks maybe inexperienced as to how to exactly build up that matchup into the Nar. And I want to pick up on something you said there, Deficio, because you said don't gank Koski. You know, he's got so many escapes, got double movement summoners. Where do you gank if you're NIP? Where do you look to force these plays? So, top lane, one option. You can dive a Gragas in the early game. Bot lane, the other option. Yes, it's hard against Alistar, but if you're sending three to four guys down there with so much CC, you should be able to at least force them away and then take that tower. NIP right now with Spartle, he's still not level 6 because he had that roam earlier where well, he didn't get a kill but he denied a camp. Obviously that didn't benefit him, only benefited Shook. So Spartle is still not really uh, hitting his level 6 mark where he also adds even more engage. And both supports have spent a lot of time outside of their lane here. Usually we see a little bit more of a laning phase as Dreams jumps in on towards Spartle. Here comes Nagne as well, Dreams pointed up, the arrow coming out, heroic entrance, knocked back. That's Evil a kill! Plague, though, is it gonna kill him? Come oh. heal from Hiku right in the nick of time. Shook's joined the fray, and now Koski's gonna do some work. Yuki gets first blood, Koski's dead. Dreams up towards the side as well. Hiku trying to get the damage down across the wall, but Yuki jumps in for the double. Looking for a little bit more, Hiku and Shook forced away. Kegis is just around the corner. 
Body slam, flash, knock back, explosive cast. Here comes the root as well, but perhaps a little bit too early from Amazing as Shook is able to flag and drag away. All right, while all this is happening, Prophet is getting damage on the top lane tower, but this was a great fight for Mysterious Monkeys. They were not pulled around the map by any shenanigans, hard engage or Gali ulties. No, they took a fight, but they had plenty of members around. They got the first few kills as well. The scaling composition with the Tristana sitting on 2-0, you could not ask actually for a better start if you are the Mysterious Monkeys. Let's have another look at this because Spassel goes in for the vision. I don't think he saw dreams with that. I think the, the plan actually just showed him just next to the brush. He got a little bit surprised. So as soon as he takes all this damage, it's very easy for Yuki to jump in and secure the kill. The only positive here for NIP is the fact that Prophet is taking that top lane tower, but he would have gotten that eventually anyway. So for them, this is actually not great. And they are the ones obviously wants to get this early advantage. You can see in your picture in picture as well. We'll see Kick is going to Shook. It's a little bit too early in the on the engage from Amazing that allows Shook to get away. I've actually seen this quite a lot now. A Jarvan is able to flag and drag out of snares. I see it so often. You can uh, do it on Miasma as well. It's it's really weird, but it, it keeps happening. Uh, Shook just did it right here. And I'm sure it is intended because, again, we see it uh, all the time. But it is a very useful thing for a Jarvan because it makes it even harder to actually keep him in place. We are hovering around mid lane once again. Koshku did lose both his summoners before. He's still farming even. He got two assists. And this Vladimir is only getting better. Koshku being able to scale up and Yuki scaling up as well on that Tristana. Looks like he's going up towards that first Energizer item before he gets the completed Infinity Edge. This is what we like to see from Kickers now as well. And we mentioned the items. We get the Glacial Shroud. Fantastic. So, so efficient on the Gragas. Get the Ninja Tabi. Nagna gonna gank the mid lane. That's um, not too much damage. Does have to flash away from Dreams. And the Nature's Grasp was used by Amazing. Nagna there, he knew if he starts charging up the Justice Punch, he gets interrupted by Alistar. You need to just flash straight away. Dreams uh, will just return down to the bottom, but this means that NIP will actually get some damage on the tower. So even though Mysterious Monkeys won that fight, NIP have actually been able to open up the map a little bit. They get the top tower, they're looking to almost get this bottom tower as well. They get the Infernal Drake, they're 2,000 gold ahead to Fischio. It seems like Mysterious Monkeys won it, but NIP are doing a better job. Yeah, because again, they're still at the early advantage, right? They will naturally start winning some of these lanes without winning a fight specifically. They could actually dive bot lane right now, and they're investing everything. Galio's coming, there's a TP as well. And the arrow it does connect on towards Yuki Spadal going in with the quickness gets knocked back his profit there's the cataclysm here's the heroic entrance and all of NIP want a party in the bot lane trying to catch out dreams as he uses the ultimate to get away for the time being Koskyu sanguine pool profit almost mega might look for the secondary dive Emo plague shook goes in dreams with the knockback profit will get the gnar and get himself another kill NIP get two and are looking for a third dreams no flash on him that's another kill for NIP and that was the play we talked about for the last five six minutes, NIP using this Galio, using that Lobos to go bot lane, execute a play like this one. Look at the amount of CC they have to set it up. That arrow landed onto Yuki, allowed everyone from Ninjas in Pajamas to just secure a few kills to get bot lane tower as well. Every single member will offer some sort of crowd control on this team. So when they go here and this arrow lands, well, there's no way out for the Mysterious Monkeys. It's a great interrupt onto the Rakan, but then the next CC just applies. And then, look, there's more coming. There's a knockup right there. There's a taunt. There's soon going to be a Mega Nar. Like, it is so hard to do anything if you are getting jumped as Mysterious Monkeys. While all of this was happening, Mysterious Monkeys were able to get the Rift held up towards the top side of the map. Kickers has also put some pressure on the tower up there. So they are trying to get a little bit of an advantage over on the other sides of the Summoner's Rift, but a 3,000 gold lead for NIP looks very good for them in this mid game. When they have a gold lead, oh, actually in the series against Giants, they had a gold lead in almost all of their games and uh, they lost three of those. So it's not the best thing in the world. It was rough uh, to look at the NIP games because They just did not know what to do with the advantage. They had really bad lane assignments and it punished them quite a lot. That the one game where Nagni got super fed on Lucian, where they managed to close out the game. He's not on Lucian this time around, he's on Galio, he's the more supportive role. They're relying on HeQ as the main damage dealer in this game. Which is why, once again, they can't really afford to go full late game. Because it's just not the same as what the monkeys are bringing. A lot of trust put into HeQ though, after he had a disappointing performance against Giants uh, last week. He Played incredibly well against Fnatic and then just really slumped 
in that Giants performance. Now, NIP are being able to open up this map a little bit more. They have the lead at the moment, Deficio, but at some point, Mysterious Monkey's scaling has to come into effect. Yeah, I mean, once you start hitting two to three items, the Mysterious Monkeys will be able to win fights. And until we get to that point, it's all on NIP to get as big of a goal lead as possible. We saw earlier today the full tank comp from Giants just kind of get the early advantage and run over the enemy. There's just nothing you could do. That's the same thing NIP are trying to do with Rakan, Galio, Javan, and Nar. Like, Yuki should not be able to kill these guys in the early game. But once he gets a few items and he gets a, you know, some armor penetration, he deals serious damage. And then there's still the Vladimir next to him, who is going to kill Hiku every single team fight. So you're telling me that Nargane should have gone Medjai's. That's the issue. If hey, NIP where's the Leandries, win, man? No Leandries, no Medjai's. What are you doing, Nargane? This is too conventional for a promotion tournament. Mysterious Monkeys and NIP stepping away from the conventions they have played with in the past. Viftoj used in the top lane will be the second tower of the game for the Mysterious Monkeys and will close that gold difference. And right here we have one of those uh, NIP situations again we saw a lot. He actually didn't get his shot. <laughs> he He's gets like, ready. Wait it's like, for it's, it. It's like when you see a false start in a <laughs> yeah. running race. It's like, oh, not quite. Oh, he'll get, he'll get a second chance. Second. second chance. Here we go. Will they actually get the hit? Oh, a I just want to see a zoom in on the Herald here. Well, this is his lifelong purpose. Is yeah, to hit this tower. but he's now like, he's going to suck at it because oh, he no. gets to hit him. And he might actually not even get there. She might not even get there. Disqualified, I guess, for that false start. Well, they did change the rules a few years ago that one false start did get you disqualified from the tournament. And there sadly, Rift Herald was disqualified from taking down any towers in the top lane. Perhaps a misuse from the Mysterious Monkeys when they knew they were going to take down that tower anyway. Yeah, I definitely would have saved her. If for at least like 30 seconds longer to see if you're actually going to commit for the tier 2 tower, seeing as that first tower is a free kill. But it's still 2-2 two -two in terms of towers. There is of course a gold advantage for NIP and that Infernal Drake, which could be useful, but most of their champions do not stack a lot of AD and AP. It's only really HQ is going to be like, yeah, Infernal, that's what I like. The rest is like, where's Mountain Drake? I really want to kill Baron faster. And yeah. We need that Cloud to kind Drake of close out the game. The chase potential. Hey, I mean, even Cloud Drake could sometimes be useful. Sometimes. Sometimes, in very rare situations. However, Prophet does have a lead in this top lane over Kikis. Kikis, perhaps, uh, it's a difficult matchup for him anyway to play into the range of the Nar, but perhaps showing a little bit of weakness on these tanks as well, something we'll need to track throughout the course of the series if this is going to be a stalwart of the Mysterious Monkeys drop. Yeah, we can't really judge Kikis until we see him in fights. I think we can judge him all of the time. Uh, That's what I like you're right. to do. We judge can judge all the time. However, before we can really say if he's a great tank or not, we need to see him in team fights. Okay. We gotta see his presence there. Is he able to actually be useful on the Gragas? What kind of situation or what kind of Gragas will he be? I've seen KDA Gragas. That's not great. He stands at the outside with full tank build and then he throws in a barrel that deals like 200 damage. Be like, hey guys, I'm helping. Look, That's not what we want to see. You said you'd never talk about the time that I played top Gragas in the, <laughs> the show, but apparently it comes up quite often. Profit trying to get the damage down onto Kickers in this top lane. And as we approach the 20 minute mark, it is NIP who have the small early game lead. They're going to get their second Dragon as well, the Cloud that it's effective at times. How effective is this NIP composition coming past the 20 minute mark, getting to the point where Mysterious Monkeys pick up these first couple of items? I mean, you still have time to start playing around Baron and force a team fight there with your draft. You're still at the point where the tanks, the damage does matter, even like a full tank Javan. The base damage of these guys are high enough to really threaten the squishy champions. And by that, I mean Hikyu, oh sorry, Yuki. That's the only squishy champion on the side of Mysterious Monkeys. But we are getting closer and closer to where the monkeys will start really being hard to fight against. Uh, two items fully completed on cost Q right now. We're already at the point where killing him is difficult. He has penetration now with the Void Staff, so he will even deal some proper damage to the big boys on the side of NIP. And I'm just kind of waiting for the first fight where I feel like Mysterious Monkeys already have the tools to at least go even. And if they do actually manage to win that, win that fight, the game is basically over in favor of the Mysterious Monkeys. And just outscale as we get later on into the game. I think you can sense a little bit of nerves from both of these teams as well. They know that winning this first game of the best of five sets you this off on a good This could be good though, Medic. We've seen Spiral do this before. He moves behind the mid lane tower and looks for the flank. They did see Vladimir was topside. First engage tool was used with the arrow. It hit Dreams. They're going to engage onto Shook. Mysterious Monkeys want to take the fight. Nature's Grass comes out as well. They force NIP back. Kickers is on the flank here. Does have the barrel. Will knock back Prophet, but he goes into a wall. Thought he was AP. Didn't really do a whole lot onto Prophet. Oh, the good old days of Deathfire, Grass, AP, Gragas. Yuki is also sitting on 2,300 gold right now, so you 
actually don't really want to force a fight before he goes back and uses all that gold. He is on his way back to base now. Uh, he's a happy camper because he got his Infinity Edge completed. Mysterious Monkeys did show us there that they have strong disengage. If they can avoid the stacking power that NIP have, the NAR comes out from Profit. Amazing's on his way. He was like, oh, do I take the red buff? Do I go for the fight? Kickers is like, I need you, Amazing. I need a little bit of a hand as the heroic entrance comes in as well from Nagne. No. Yeah, no indeed. That's Dibisho. not what you're supposed to do. Uh, NIP have already had a few opportunities to force around the dual lane where they could try and utilize the Galliolti, but this one. Sadly, not what you're looking for as Ninjas in Pajamas. It was obviously a very late ulti, but almost like a defensive version of it. But this monkey's already backed away. They're like, we don't actually want to fight this. We just want a team fight later. So, uh, one ulti not being successful from Nagne's side. We need still to see that first big team fight. If NIP still have enough damage. You sound so much like a playbook caster. <laughs> just, I want to see team fights, but like, guys. I this want this to be bronze. At this, be solo I'm just saying, at this point in this game here, like it literally just comes down to the next big fight. Uh, because none of the teams at this point have a huge advantage over the other one. It's just NIP's on the clock. It, it's truly horrible for them to walk into a late game fight. So it's on NIP to force the fight as well. As we've talked about, yes. Mysterious Monkeys are the ones setting up the vision control around the Baron, which is where NIP would like to be. Control wards sitting in the inventory of Shook and Nagne mean that they can play around that vision. Alongside that, an execution is calling for TQ. Mysterious Monkeys group around mid. We'll look at that item in a second as Shook gets knocked back. Hemo Plague used as well. Yuki with the leap. Profit's looking for the engage onto Amazing, trying to build up that Mega Nar. They could get a good ultimate up here. There's the stun. Here's the team fight to Fisho. You wanted it. And Mysterious Serious Monkeys and NIP are going to deliver Nature's Grasp. Nar into the wall, shook here, the quickness lands onto Yuki, a great cataclysm, but Yuki flashes. Kozgu down low as he's exhausted. Dream's trying to run off towards the bottom of the pit as well. Kozgu flashes the wall, NIP just keep on rolling. They keep on trucking. They want these oh, kills, they, they know can't. they need them, oh, but they <laughs> can't get them to fish here. They wanted so much more. They use so many flashes and ulties and they only get one kill. Baron is alive though, they are looking at it. They are still very healthy. They're going straight for it. Mysterious Monkeys, they gotta rush up here if they wanna try and stop it, but Koskyu is still super low. Koskyu super low, amazing, not even alive. That's the lowest you can be. Kickers does have the teleport. He might try and join this fight. The explosive cast is not there, and it looks actually like the Mysterious Monkeys are going to accept that NIP get the Baron off that fight. All right, very important for Ninja Simba Jamis. You guys can already see there how hard it was for NIP to cleanly win a fight. This was them catching out amazing at first after this little engage happens where Vladimir Ulti is now gone. That is a huge one for this upcoming fight. Amazing takes a lot of damage, ends up getting CC'd, and he's more or less out of the fight before it even starts with this Maokai. So this is everything NIP dreamed of. There's no Vladimir ulti, the Maokai is already dead, and they use everything they can to try and take down the two carries. They do not succeed, but they delay them long enough, they force them back to base that they can actually take Baron. So, NIP, they get another chance here with this Baron buff to get a bigger lead. They need an item advantage to keep beating Mysterious Monkeys in fights. Look at Prophet's damage in that fight as well. That's the power of Nar. An important thing as well in that fight to Fischio is the uses of Flash. Mysterious Monkeys only have one Flash remaining, whereas NIP still have the Flash on the job and still has Sprottles as well. And now they've got those engage ultimates coming off cooldown. Exactly. So Yuki might be the target in the next fight here. He only has the one jump to get out. If that does not work for him, he will die. And suddenly NIP can start rolling over the monkeys again. One of the things about Ash, though, is if we have a fight like the one we saw before where Ash is not under threat, she can actually deal some serious damage. But the problem is, most times she is under threat because she has no mobility. She has to sit there, fire away with the Ranger's focus. And it is difficult to play team fights as a low mobility to carry in this meta. Giving a little bit of utility as well alongside the arrow with that build. Execution is calling that picked up very early on. Works into Amazing, works into Cosque as well. And, with and Alistar, moves. even Gragas. Like, there's actually a lot of people getting HP back here on the side of the monkeys. And I think you're going to get that second Infernal here. And you said earlier on Infernals aren't the best, but when you start getting a couple of them, Deficio, on this lineup, they have to start working for you as a team. Yeah, it's always great to get, but there are just sometimes you have a composition with, like, you know, a Cassiopeia and so on, and you're like, yes, this is the one we need. But uh, in this game here, again, it is mainly HeQ benefiting from it. Profit, of course, gets a bit of value as well with his build. All the big tanks do not care too much about the percent increase. 
This game's feeling a lot cleaner than some of the series we've seen from NIP and Mysterious Monkeys in the past. Still not amazing, I will give you, but both the teams seem to respect their win conditions, respect what the other team can do. And you can tell that they're fighting for their position in the LCS as well. A best of five between the, one of these two teams and the European Challenger Series. Demoted from the LCS. And you have to remember, Mysterious Monkeys, this entire squad only got promoted last split. Yeah, I mean, these were the two teams who bought into the LCS after, you know, the promotion tournament last split. So dropping right back out, that's like the worst feeling ever for both players and organization. Let's see what happens mid lane. Arrow lands onto Amazing, the knockup as well. Here comes Nagne. That's the sort of ultimate we like to see in a team fight. But the damage onto Spadal's huge. No exhaust juice as well. Nagne in the front line. He's going to get rooted down as Yuki joins the fray. Prophet trying to do what he can. A great Nam into the wall, but HQ is miles away from this. Nagne is going to fall as well. And Mysterious Monkeys may have got to the breaking point. Yeah, it smells like late game right now, Medic. There's uh, Vladimir. He doesn't care if you dive onto him. He has so much damage in return and will just get all the HP back. Yuki was very safe in that fight and NIP realizing that dive was not the correct call. They couldn't actually get enough damage moved in to the correct position to hit some of these tanks that were trying to lock down and while Sprattle got a nice engage he's a very squishy Rakan with this build and these guys do not care if Rakan jumps in their face. They want him to do that. That's a little bit of greed. After you land the ultimate onto Amazing, do you then engage? I mean, we always have to look at HeQ in these fights and how many autos he gets off because he's the main damage dealer. So far, he's gotten zero autos off because they're diving past the tower as well. He got two volleys. That was it from HeQ's side. So it is obviously not possible for NIP to actually kill anyone if it's just a few of the tanks diving in. That fight... A little bit over aggressive, 1,000 damage from HeQ. Ah, he did more than Yuki. He did. Uh, Yuki's job was stay back, yeah. do I'd, not die. I'd like to see how much damage the tower did in that fight as well. Would probably uh, have some pretty big damage numbers. We're getting towards the late game now, Deficio, and this is when Mysterious Monkeys really come online. Triple item Tristana, triple item Vladimir yeah. as well. That's what you want to see on your scaling hyper carry. At this point, I feel like NIP needs to completely outplay Mysterious Monkeys in, in the following fights if they want to keep this advantage. Otherwise, it's on cost cube right now to be a massive threat and on this Vladimir. We've seen Unicons a lot execute Vladimir comes quite often, fall behind in the early game, but then get to this point well, you have three items, you can almost one-shot the enemy AD carry, and then you start winning. Profit, though, will still be annoying in the side lane. As you guys can see, the damage is not insane, but he wins the 1v1. Yeah, and he can force kickers back, so if Mysterious Monkeys aren't able to respond to Profit's split push, then there's a possibility that NIP can draw the Mysterious Monkeys out across the map a little bit more, separate this team-fighting composition a little bit, and try and split up the Mysterious Monkeys' decision-making. So uh, adaptive helmet here on Prophet is not too valuable in this game. Uh, Spirit Visage probably been a superior choice for him, but nonetheless, he is moving in to try and take this bot lane tower. Kick is doing his best to try and actually defend it. Once again, Mysterious Monkeys are hoping to find a 5 on 5 team fight where NIP are happy enough to actually use Prophet. Prophet able to get the tower, but here comes Dreams as well. NIP need to react to the fact that there's a support in the bottom lane, unable to find the engage they would like in the mid lane. And this is something that has haunted NIP across the course of the split as well, Deficio. We talked extensively early on in the split about how, how NIP had this great early game. They were able to take leads, they were able to get advantages over better teams than them. And then they just weren't able to do anything with it. And here we saw them have a 2,000 gold lead early on, and then they just waited, and Mysterious Monkeys came online. And for a lot of teams, playing the early game is a bit easier because it it is a lot like solo queue, where like very standard laning phase, and you have a jungler who you can maybe coordinate ganks with, and you can get these early leads, but then it gets really difficult after 20 minutes, where you gotta coordinate, split push, lane assignments, you know, rotations, vision. Like, there's so many complex things in professional League of Legends. It takes a long time to learn, and sometimes the lineups just do not have one or two players who are actually great enough shot callers to kind of lead a team. Uh, it's something that is very rare, and, and if you find one, you hold on to him. Mithy is a great example of a person where, no matter which team he's on, you just feel like they're pretty good macro. They, they kind of understand how to play the game. And you see people like Max Law switch between teams to be that dedicated sh shot caller. Misfits actually having a resurgence with him now, as they uh, beat out the Unicorns of Love uh, a couple of weeks ago. So, NIP, double Infernal. HeQ is not sitting on three items yet, no Infinity yet. He's actually gone for the... 
Oh, oh Yuki, Nage flashes in, but the cleanse from Yuki is absolutely superb. And now NIP needs to retreat because here comes the flank from Amazing, the knockback onto Hiku. Goodbye, Eddie Carey! He's in the midst of them all. He's surviving, Takisho! You said goodbye! He says hello as he survives throughout the fight. Cosq taken down. NIP able to turn the fight around. Are all our predictions going to hell in a handbasket? NIP are refusing to give up. Oh, that locket came in so clutch here for Hiku. I thought he was gone. Cosq could not get the last bit of damage off either. That's a kill now on the Vladimir. NIP outplay Mysterious Monkeys in that fight. They go to the Baron. Let's see what happens actually. Uh, Mysterious Monkeys, they're still here to try and fight. Dream still has Ignite and Flash can jump in. Amazing still has the Smite. They're going to go for the engage. Nongle jumps in. It's up to Hiku. One volley off. Let's see these autos as well because Yuki's safe on the back lane. Already we see one NIP member fall, but here comes Hiku rattling out the shots, getting that quiver refilled as Amazing jumps back in. NIP going to re engage on that back line. That's the jungler down. And the arrow on to Yuki. Nongle gets in. The taunt up. The kill. NIP coming back in this game. Hit you right now, finding the proper kills here, good arrows as well. I was about to talk about his build before, because he went for Essence Reaver. So he went for the build where he said, I need more ultis, instead of actually having the highest amount of damage. But in this kind of composition, we have so many tanks around you, normally investing fully in the best damage possible is the way to go. But he wanted more arrows to force more fights. Yuki right here, took a lot of damage from Prophet, arrow flies in from EQ, smack right in the face of Tristana. So this is looking great for Ninja Simple Jams, but then let's see. Koski dives in with Amazing, a ton of damage down. I think a Locket Shield comes in for EQ as well. And Koski just could not get the last bit of damage off to actually finish the Ash. And this is why NIP could get that one kill onto Q. Win the fight for now, but it's still so close in every single team fight. And then we see the re-engage around the Baron. NIP actually doing a very good job here to call off the Baron, not go for the 50 Yeah, but also Mysterious Monkeys, they realize we can stop this. Yuki's safe in the back line for now, gets the one kill, and has to then jump out because of Profit going in with Meganaw, but they've already stopped Baron. I think Amazing realizes he's dead here. He's just kind of sacrificing himself so the rest of the team can run away. That's a blind arrow. That is a blind arrow onto Yuki. Like, Hiku, we've said, perhaps hasn't had the best performance last week. He's showing up with his arrows in this Ooh, game. Ooh, so two guys on Drake, while Baron is still not started by NIP. I thought actually uh, Shook dove in there to start it, but they just cleared the wards. So, and uh, Mysterious Monkeys, you actually get away with an Ocean Drake. Prophet is still sitting in the bottom lane with TB. Kickers can match and join in. We're starting to hit these full builds as well. NIP have a 5,500 gold lead. There's still no Infinity on HQ though. He had to go for the last Whisper before completing it because there's so much armor on the side of Mysterious Monkeys. But this is huge. Lacking Infinity Edge for these late game fights is not great for the Ash. It's so focused on cooldown reduction right now. Let's see if he can land another arrow though. Shook engages onto Dreams. There's the arrow connecting as well, but Dreams will use the ult. Profit isolating Koskyu off towards the side of the fight. Profit still has the wallop. Will stun up that Alistair. The knockback as well. Here comes Kickers. Heroic entrance was cancelled. Hiku needs to get those autos down. They're getting underneath the tower. The charm connects as well. Mysterious Monkeys, their front line starting to fall, but they can re-engage onto Someone NIP. Die. Dreams dies, so does Amazing. As you said, Davisio, they fall like flies. Nagne jumps in, another kill for NIP. They take down Yuki and NIP win the late game fight. Koskyu cannot find the back line of NIP. He ends up using ulti on just a few tanks in the front. Mysterious Monkeys are not utilizing their strong late game here. HQ was untouched in that entire team fight. Mysterious Monkeys, they waited and waited, they scaled, and then they end up actually missing the opportunity in some of, fights, in some of these fights, and NIP just outplayed them. Doubting Deficio, thinking that NIP could not win the late game you fights. Are NIP show us up. They show that they can take these fights and they can take their place back in the LCS. They still need to win this best of five. They're going to go for the Nexus Towers now and they will look to go 1-0 up over the Mysterious Monkeys. Eventually. Eventually. They'll get there. Amazing jumps in. There's the Nexus. 1-0. NIP. So ninjas in pajamas in the late game fights without even Infinity Edge completed on the AD carry. Managed to win. And we got to look at the Monkeys and, and the Vladimir like you get to this point in the game, there's very little threat against you. Your one job is you need to find the Ash every single time. There's enough tanks to set it up for you as well, an Alistar, a Gragas, a Maokai, like, they're trying to make the life easier for Koskyu, but he just never really found the correct fight on this Vladimir, and 
Sure. I doubted that NIP would keep winning these late game we fights. It. We but it. we just gotta, gotta say, like, NIP just played the late game fights better. And obviously their composition wasn't useless by any means, and that's why they, they ended up winning them. Gotta give them credit. They played of it course. incredibly well in the late game. And something that we haven't seen from NIP in the past, late game strong team fighting as well. We said that early game's been strong. <laughs> holding away. Oh, sorry. Bit I was of a there. But yeah, we said Very that their young. early game fighting has been good, but then they fall around, fall, up, fall apart at the late game. This game really seems to show that they, they know what they're doing in the late game now. Yeah, we had so many super close fights where it was like one kill going over, but it was NIP who picked up the one kill most of the time, which also set up that early Baron. They actually used to get a bit of a gold lead, which was very needed, because at that point in the game, it was actually pretty much locked in place that this was going to be just like two teams, even in gold, even in items. But then NIP get that one fight where they get the Baron after and they got a bit of a gold advantage. So that was really key for them. But generally, there's a lot of team fighting back and forth. I think HeQ landed some very good arrows, got enough damage down as well on this Ash. And we got to look on the other side and say that if you have a late game Vladimir with tanks to back him up, you need to do more in some of these big, important team fights. Well, NIP are on a mission to save their spot in the European LCS. Let's see what our analysts think about their win. Well, Medic, I think it was pretty commanding. I think we can safely say that NIP were able to execute on a composition that we have been critical uh, about over the course of the day. These single damage threat, these risks. They didn't even build a Leandri's Torment Stress. They didn't even build a <laughs> no. 20 stack Magi Soul Stealer, they, but still NIP were able to execute. They didn't build anything like that on their Galio, unlike what we'd seen in the earlier uh, session in today's best of fives. I think the thing for me that stands out is the fact that so much AD carry priority again in the draft, this time works out okay for Hiku. He he actually didn't die in that entire game. And there were a couple of fights where he looked very reserved, but his positioning ends up being one of the things that NIP actually rally around in the later game fights. But that's all the way towards the end of the game. Yeah, let's start by looking at one of the first NIP plays. It's going to be that bot lane dive. And it's honestly just such good execution from the NIP lineup. Exactly. Like, Prophet comes with a TP early on. NIP, like... Yuki actually does a good job, as does Dreams, on defending this play. Both of them hit good defensive abilities to push NIP back, but five people strong in the bottom lane. Cusq is only just able to get down to the bottom lane himself, and it means that NIP, with the numbers advantage, with all of this crowd control that maintains in their kit, means they can just go under the, in, uh, the inner tower as well. Like, NIP looking very comfortable with all of this crowd control. There you can see Prophet, a happy man, three, zero, and eight on that NAR. Uh, you know, impressive performances in the team fight. I think one of the key factors, and not necessarily a huge damage source comparatively, right? But something that did allow them to back up, allow to play with a single, I, I guess you could say, carry threat in the form of Ash. And I thought, uh, you know, a standout performance from him, especially going up against Kikis, who is often a very difficult top laner to play against, but. Kick us surprisingly, you know, on that tank matchup. Right, and unsurprisingly, the NAR comes out for Profit that you mentioned. That was what we saw in the Fnatic series work so well for NIP. So I'm a little surprised that Profit got his hands on the NAR in this matchup, especially since it was Phase 2 picked up. But you saw the impact later on that that NAR had in team fights. Just Cos Q was never able to get past him ever uh, to get into the it, fight. Honestly, it was so difficult to watch because it was it was well executed by Profit, but those fights were so, or felt so much more difficult to play out than you may have thought looking at how the composition sort of scaled. And as we look at uh, a chain of team fights that on, honestly probably gave the, the lead that decided the game in favor of NIP. Right, this was the exchange where Koski was desperately looking for HeQ here. Flashes forward, tries to get on, and Amazing is even in the back line as well. But HeQ barely survives through this fight, and that's the key thing. Koski now dead, isn't there for the follow-up fight. Profit in from the side is able to get a lot of disruption from the fight as well. And this is the point where Mysterious Monkeys look like they're scrambling. I don't feel like this was a game where Mysterious Monkeys felt like Yuki was going to carry at all. And that isn't necessarily saying that Yuki can't. Tristan is a great late game carry, but I never felt like Mysterious Monkeys were putting any kind of stock in Yuki as this game went longer. Unlike NIP, who said, okay, well, EQ, you've got the majority of our damage. Let's just let you have a safe position and carry the rest of this fight. There's so much priority putting into keeping him safe in that yeah. fight. People being willing to back off those higher priority targets. At the same time, Cosgube does, and then kind of hand deliver himself to that back line, is so close to taking out EQ. And Yes, it's an extended <laughs> engage. Once again, EQ, uh, the European sniper coming out here, hitting these arrows cross map. It is a good look for him overall. But the next replay, this is the, this is the one that is most crushing for me uh, because very often we look at how effective an AD carry is in team fights. We go, okay, how many, how many auto attacks do they get off, right? Yep. And, and you've heard Deficio break it down in that one replay where HeQ didn't get an auto once. Cause Q gets to auto a lot in this last replay. A lot, a lot. Like, 
more than enough to kill multiple tanks on six items. However, sadly, he lacks any kind of, you know, reasonable threat against the tank line. He opted to go for the QSS. He doesn't have any armor penetration. And when we look at the last fight, what should be a second threat for this team ultimately doesn't, doesn't really do much. And yes, if you could get to the back line, he, ha he would do so much damage, but... Just keep your eyes on uh, on Yuki as this fight plays out. Yeah, it's Yuki you were talking about there as Kuskyu. He's one of the ones trying to get into the back lane to deal with ah, Hikyu, yes. but Hikyu in a very safe position here. The only point at which he was under threat was a very slight moment, and from there the tank frontline comes in from NIP, just body blocking every single ability that comes out. And Hikyu, you could just about count his autos if you want through that Ranger's focus coming through as well, just able to shred through. And Kuskyu. Uh, Yuki, as you said, didn't yes, have the same I could keep impact. guys. <laughs> no. How many times can I fumble that? But at the end of the day, yes, CQ playing fantastic as Ash, and just unfortunately for Yuki, because he was... Not that his positioning was particularly challenged in that final fight, he was just allowed to stand still, but despite being a three-item Tristana, was just not enough of a threat at that point in the game. Really needed more armor penetration before he could damage the majority of those tanks, and at the same time, I feel like we do have to praise NIP, because, you know... The tank standing on the front line consistently backing in and out to make sure that Tristana could never free hit any low health targets. And I think the difficulty here that MM are going to have in the next game is it's not like you just ban Ash here, because if you ban Ash in the current meta, something's probably going wrong in your draft, because unless you're hitting five bans towards AD carries, you don't want to go that far through his champion pool. So I mean, we got to five bans on AD carry in our first series, and, and we and still did not see an Ash come out. We did. We saw a Vayne. Um, <laughs> the Ash. The Ash was uh, a lot better with the utility standpoint, but I, I honestly think we're at a point where Hikyu, we know he plays Varus as well. I actually don't think that many AD carry bans towards Hikyu is that necessary. He hasn't shown consistent performances, but when he does show up, his positioning does look quite good and is enough for NIP to rally around for a late game carry. We'll see if that remains the case because NIP are looking to stay alive and earn one more chance to save their spot in the LCS. Let's see if they continue the good play in game two coming up right after this. Best of five for your lives in the...